Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in part one of this three-part series on calculating thermal energy changes in a substance when there is a phase change in that substance, we are going to be dealing with thermal energy calculations where there is only one phase change or one change in state of matter in that substance. And generally these are going to be four-step problems. So hold on tight, here we go. Let's take a look at the very first example. It says right here in our very first example to calculate the amount of energy in kilojoules associated with 35 grams of water vapor at 105 degrees Celsius turning into water at 15 degrees Celsius. So I like to draw a little picture of what's going on whenever we have a phase change and there's a certain amount of energy that is being released or absorbed in that substance. So we have some water vapor here and it tells us this water vapor has a mass of 35 grams. So we have 35 grams of this water vapor here and the temperature of this water vapor is 105 degrees Celsius. And what's going to end up happening with this water vapor is that it's going to cool down and at 100 degrees Celsius it's going to be uh, condensed or it's going to begin to condense. So our condensation point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. And what's going to end up happening is that this water is going to cool down even further to 15 degrees Celsius. And so what we're asked to figure out is how much thermal energy this water vapor must lose in order to go from 105 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. And so this is going to be a four step problem. And in our first step right here, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how much thermal energy the water vapor is going to release as it goes from 105 to its condensation point of 100 degrees Celsius. And step two right here, what we're going to have to figure out is the heat of vaporization. That's the amount of energy it takes to just turn this water vapor back into water and in our third step right here what we're going to do is we'll have to figure out how much thermal energy this water is going to have to release to go from 100 degrees to 15 degrees celsius and once we're done with these three steps we can simply add them up and get our final answer so in our very first step here what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how much thermal energy or heat this water vapor is going to need to lose as it goes from 105 degrees Celsius to the condensation point of water which is 100 degrees Celsius and we're going to use the formula C M delta T here and so all our reference material for this problem is right here and you can typically find all this stuff online or in a table or in a textbook of some sort and so if we take a look this is telling us that the specific heat capacity of water vapor is 2.0 joules per gram degree Celsius times our mass of this water which is 35 grams times the change in temperature let's think about this the final temperature is 100 the initial temperature is 105 and if we subtract these two if we take the final minus the initial we will end up with a temperature difference of negative 5 degrees Celsius and so we're going to put this in our calculator we'll take 2.0 times 35 times negative 5 and we're going to end up with negative negative 350 joules negative 350 joules so that's going to be the amount of energy that this water vapor is going to need to lose just to go from 105 to 100 at 100 degrees celsius which is the condensation point of water vapor we're now going to have to calculate the amount of energy it took to just turn this water vapor into water. So we're going to have to calculate the heat of vaporization. And so to do this, we take the mass, which is 35 grams of water. We're going to have to convert this to moles. We know one mole of H2O is 18.02 grams of H2O. And then we're going to have to multiply this by the heat of vaporization for water, which is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. And we're going to have to keep one thing in mind, and that is that we have water vapor condensing into water. And so the sign of our heat of vaporization needs to be negative. And so we'll put this into our calculator. We'll take 35 divided by 18.02, then multiply that by negative 40.7, and we'll end up with negative 79.1 
kilojoules, right? Kilojoules. So we have joules here and kilojoules. So pay attention to that. We'll fix that later. In step three, what we're going to have to do is figure out how much thermal energy this water is going to need to release as it goes from 100 degrees Celsius to our final temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. So we're going to have to figure out how much thermal energy this water is going to need to release using Cm delta T. The specific heat of water, it says right here, is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times the mass of this water, which we said was 35 grams, times the change in temperature. We can do this in our heads. If it starts out, I'm sorry, if the final temperature is 15 and the initial temperature is 100, we take 15 minus 100 and we're going to end up with a negative 85 degrees Celsius. And so we'll put this in our calculator, 4.18 times 35 times negative 85, and we end up with negative 12,435.5 joules. So we just figured out how much thermal energy the water vapor is going to release as it goes from 105 to 100 degrees Celsius. We just figured out the heat of vaporization, the amount of energy it's going to take to just turn this water vapor into water. And in our third step here, we figured out how much, how much energy this water is going to have to release as it goes from 100 to 15 degrees Celsius. And so now what we can do is we can add these values up. But before we do that, we have a problem. This is joules, this is joules, this is kilojoules. The question here is asking for our final answer to be in kilojoules. So we have to convert these all to kilojoules. And the way that we do that is by taking this decimal and moving it to the left three times or dividing by a thousand. And so it looks like we're gonna have negative 0 0.350 kilojoules here. We're going to have negative 79.1 kilojoules here, and we're going to end up having negative 12.4355 kilojoules here. And when we put this all in our calculator, we will end up with negative 91.9. Kilojoules. So the question here, how much thermal energy is associated with 35 grams of water vapor at 105 degrees Celsius turning into water at 15 degrees Celsius? It looks like this water vapor must release. This negative sign here means releasing energy, which is an exothermic process. 91.9 kilojoules of energy. Let's take a look at another example. In this second example, it says to calculate the amount of energy in kilojoules associated with 95 grams of ice at negative 12 degrees Celsius, turning into water at 25 degrees Celsius. So here's our little picture. It looks like we're starting off at, with ice. And in fact, we have 95 grams of this ice. And the temperature of this ice is negative 12 degrees Celsius. And what's going to happen is that this ice here is going to absorb thermal energy. It's going to begin to melt at zero degrees Celsius. And then what's going to end up happening is that we're going to continue to add thermal energy into the system here. And the final temperature of this water is going to be 25 degrees Celsius. And so we have to figure out how much thermal energy this ice is going to have to absorb to go from negative 12 to 25 degrees Celsius. And so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to use Q equals Cm delta T for our ice here as it goes from negative 12 to the melting point. Once it melts in our second step, we're going to have to calculate the heat of fusion for our ice, the amount of energy it takes to just turn ice into water. And in our third step here, we're going to have to use Q equals C times M times delta T to figure out how much thermal energy the water is going to need to absorb as it goes from 0 to 25 degrees Celsius. Once we have these three values, we can add them up. So in step one here, let's figure this out. We're going to figure out how much thermal energy this ice is going to need to absorb as it goes from negative 12 degrees to zero degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity of ice is 2.03. The mass of our ice here is going to be 95 grams. And the change in temperature as it goes from negative 12 to zero is 12 degrees Celsius. And so we'll go ahead and put this in our calculator. We'll take 2.03 times 95 times 
12 and we'll end up with 2314.2 2314.2 joules in our next step we're gonna have to figure out the heat of fusion so let's calculate our heat of fusion here the mass of this ice is 95 grams we'll have to divide this by the molar mass of water which is 18.02 grams per mole And then we're going to multiply this by our heat of fusion of ice, which it tells us right here is 6.02 kilojoules for every mole. So we'll take our calculator out, 95 divided by 18.02 times 6.02, and we will end up with 31.7 kilojoules. Kilojoules. This is joules. This is kilojoules. We'll fix that here in a few moments. In step three, we need to, we need to figure out how much thermal energy this water now is going to absorb as it goes from zero degrees Celsius to 25. So the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. It tells us that right here. The mass of our water is staying the same. It's 95 degrees Celsius or 95 grams. And our change in temperature as it goes from 0 to 25 is 25 degrees Celsius. So we'll put this in our calculator 4.18 times 95 times 25. And we're going to end up with 9,927.5 joules. And so before we can add these three numbers up, we have to make sure that they are all in kilojoules. So we'll end up with 2.3142 kilojoules here. We're going to keep this at 31.7 kilojoules here. And we'll move the decimal to the left three times and we'll end up with 9.9275 kilojoules here. And so now we'll add these three numbers up and we will end up with 43. 0.9 kilojoules. So what does this answer mean? Well, in order for this ice to go from negative 12 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius, it's going to have to absorb 43.9 kilojoules of heat from its surroundings. And because this sign here is going to be positive, that means this process is endothermic, right? An endothermic process. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I hope you guys found this helpful.